Veterans Television, better known as Vet TV, put a movie up on Amazon Prime, and since it's been posted, it has been ruffling some feathers, to say the least. The movie called A Grunt's Life was apparently too violent for Amazon Prime streaming, and so Amazon Prime took it down, which, I'm not gonna lie, a little bittersweet, really sucks that you got taken down. Really cool that you got taken down. That is a baller move that you were too violent for Amazon Prime that they took you down. But even after getting a middle finger from Amazon, I was still able to watch it at agruntslife.com. I'm pretty sure I streamed all the Jackass movies last week on Amazon Prime, and I saw Bam Margera's dick like 30 times in those things, so how grotesque can this movie really be? They should have given it to Netflix. Those guys will post anything. They, they got Thanks Killing where a turkey cuts off dudes' dicks and throws it at people's faces and topless pilgrims running around. I forgot the word pilgrim, but I must digress. A grunt life is a tale about a bunch of marine grunts in Afghanistan going through their daily rigmarole throughout the course of about a week and the trials and tribulations they go through and meeting some of the locals and dealing with their inept leadership. But they also bring up some really weird shit that I am gonna talk about. The movie opens not on a babbling brook or a flock of geese flying in throughout the sky, but a dude in a makeshift port john cranking one off, and then a bullet flies right by his head. I know that might seem strange to most, but I'm pretty sure that every guy who's been deployed knows a guy who knows a guy that has had that happen to them. In 2006 and 7, a buddy of a buddy and was sitting down in a port of shitter and skew, skew, they started getting in a firefight and a couple rounds went over his head in through the port of John. He jumped out with his pants around his ankles trying to get over into a bunker so he could return fire, figure out what the hell was going on. Now this character's a little more low key than that and seems to take it in stride to each his own. Now that might not seem so bad. It's just just a guy doing what comes natural to him in a hazardous environment? Well, that was just the beginning. But let me go on with the weirdness. Throughout the movie, we find out that this guy is a freaking psycho. And he is all about getting ear necklaces off of dudes and wearing them around his neck. And I can't say that war trophies don't happen. World War II, Vietnam, everybody was looking for a skull so that they could post it on top of his stick and say, oh, hey, we are the dudes you don't want to mess with. But what threw me off in this scene here is how he picks up just a normal human severed hand and uh, continues his endeavors from earlier. Who's picking up random body parts from overseas and saying I think I'm gonna have a little bit of fun with this later. Let me throw this in a backpack and complete the rest of my blow up doll. And for God's sake, Donnie, why am I looking at your dong? This guy is this guy is all over the internet trying to help military veterans and putting up fantastic content. And I gotta look at this dude's dick. Ah! Oh, I'm just not ready to see somebody's dong on the big screen. Call me old-fashioned. As the movie goes on, they eventually encounter some resistance, pick up an IED maker, get in a couple firefights, and that's the norm. But some of the stuff they do to these prisoners of war is some road to Abu Ghraib shit. Now I know you have some creative leeway because you wrote it and you starred in it there, New Age Sylvester Stallone, but you don't need to show your pecker in a movie kind of like Sylvester Stallone did. It's still weird. To go on with the weird Pecker theme, half of the platoon in this movie ends up sitting around having a kumbaya moment where they're just stroking each other's barrels. And I get it, we've all done it. We've all grabbed a barrel while we're cleaning it or somebody else has gone, <laughs> it's like I'm beating a wiener. But it went on for like a minute and a half. I'm sitting there, eyes fixed in horror. It's dude just slowly stroke their barrels. Ah, oh, I'm getting weird, just, ah. Uh. It's been five minutes. Why am I still staring at these guys doing Bikram yoga, slowly jerking each other off? I can see why Amazon Prime was a little hesitant. Now, besides a couple of the scenes that I've went over and a multitude of scenes that I have not, there were quite a few scenes 
that really painted the picture of what it's like to be overseas and how freaked up it is. There's one scene where a kid gets shot and everybody holds around him thinking, oh God, please don't let it be my best friend. Don't let it be my best friend. And it's not. It ends up being a guy that's a turd in the unit. Now that doesn't mean that we want every guy who's not the best at PT or is a little slow on the uptake getting shot or blown up. Think of it like a football game. If somebody had to get hurt on the Seahawks, you wouldn't want it to be Russell Wilson. He's your team guy. What a gentleman, what a friendly dude who can string along a play of nothing and turn it into something. But what about Roy Rogers, your third string kicker? What if he had to have a season ending injury? Well, that's kind of what it's like in war. Another scene that struck home was when the guys that were out on mission just like look around at the locals and wonder how that guy is gonna kill me today. Cause that happens. You look around at a kid and be like, oh, is he gonna open up a cigar box with a grenade in it and detonate at me? I don't know, he might. Oh, what about that lady? She got a suicide bomb underneath that vest. He's gonna walk up to me like, oh, hello, bow, and I'm gone. What about that dude? He's staring at me, he's got a cell phone. Is there an ID around me? Am I gonna die yet? I wonder if I'm gonna get shot in the head by some sniper I can't even see. All right, life goes on. Another point that would resonate with people frustrated with their leadership overseas were some of the daydreams this marine lieutenant would have about really sticking it to those sons of bitches that make your day hard you just wanna ah, ah. the scene that moved me the most was one of the darkest turning into the most light-hearted scenario I think you could pull off. These guys gather around a prisoner of war who most likely killed one of their buddies and want to beat his brains in with a bat. Now we've all had those thoughts and we're not going to go through with them because we're not a bunch of war criminals. But man, the rage built up inside you about wanting this dude dead because he might have cost your buddy a leg or an arm or his life. Ooh, those built up in there make you want to do some things. But instead of actually taking it out on him, they end up mining all their favorite batters and just making a joke about it and then it becomes a game of who can grab the bat from who had it last and do a better impersonation of a different batting style. I guess the best way to describe this movie is a mix of Apocalypse Now and Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas where there's just a lot of weird shit going on. But what do I know? You can make up your own mind and watch it at agruntslife.com. Write down in the comments what you think. What was the most jarring thing that you saw? For me, it was Donnie Stick. Do you think it's as offensive as Amazon did? Or is it the best movie since Range 15? Let me know in the comments.